Hello, everyone. My name is Dick Zhang. I'm a mechanical engineering student here at Penn. I also lead our efforts at Identify Technologies. And I'm here today to talk about the evolution of robotics and these quad rotors. But before we can talk about the future of robotics, I think it's important that we evaluate ourselves and look at how we've evolved over the years. So we started out as single cell organisms. And then uh, cells cooperated. And we grew into these organs and organisms. And then it was through the cooperation of these organs that we slowly evolved into what we know today to be the human being. Now, most animal species stopped their evolution at this step. But we as humans took our evolution one step further. And we cooperated together in cities, in tribes, and societies. And it's not that we're faster or that we're stronger than other animals, but it's that we cooperated. And that's what allowed us to come out on top. Now, let's switch gears and look at the evolution of something a little bit different. So the electric motor was invented 200 years ago. When we cooperate a couple of motors, we can create a robotic joint that's capable of movement in one direction. It's the cooperation of a couple of these robotic joints that we can create robotic arms that are capable of really complicated three-dimensional movements. It was a cooperation of a line of these robotic arms that we created the assembly line that was capable of manufacturing individual parts, like a car door here. And then it's through the cooperation of a lot of these assembly lines that we can create manufacturing facilities and interconnected supply chain networks that are capable of producing incredibly complicated products very quickly. So we've been talking a lot about um, evolution here. We looked at the evolution of humans. We looked at the evolution of the assembly line. And we, put it, uh, we looked at them through a common framework here. Now, the really impressive step in this framework is where we go from one unit to multiple units in the system cooperating. And that's really the step that I want to focus on in this evolution framework today. So let's take a look at this critical step in the evolution framework through the context of transportation. So we've all seen the Google self-driving car. It's this wonderful car. You put a couple of sensors on it, and you can make it take you to Taco Bell, get you a burrito, and drive you back home without touching the steering wheel, right? Now, the bigger question here is, what happens if we have not one Google self-driving car in the system, but multiple cars in the system, all cooperating with each other. So every car knows what the cars around it is going to be doing. And the vision here that the United States Department of Transportation and the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor are trying to develop is a, a scenario where cars can cooperate with each other, and we can completely eliminate the chance of traffic or the chance of fatal car accidents. And this sort of vision is only enabled through the cooperation of a lot of units in the system. Now let's take a look at the same evolution framework through the context of consumer robotics. So we've all heard of the Roomba. The Roomba is this wonderfully autonomous uh, vacuum, right? And when paired with a kitten, can actually be quite fun. <laughs> so now, naturally, the question we want to ask is, <laughs> what happens if we look at not one Roomba in the whole system, but multiple autonomous consumer robots, right? And that's exactly what RoboEarth is trying to develop. So they're trying to create this scenario where consumer robots communicate and cooperate with each other, but they also cooperate with the cloud. So they take in sensor data, they communicate the data with the cloud, and cooperate with the cloud, and then the cloud takes care of the heavy processing, the heavy computation work, and then sends the final commands back down to the robot. So the vision here is that consumer robots won't need to carry expensive computers and processing power on board, which is really going to allow widespread consumer robots. And this sort of vision is only possible because we expand our system and include multiple cooperating units and not think of just one. And finally, and my favorite, um, let's look at this critical step in the evolution framework in the terms of uh, inventory management. So the big question I used to have was, how can I order a pink tiara on Amazon right now and have it shipped to my doorstep in less than 24 hours? And that's exactly the problem that Kiva Systems and Amazon took to answering. So they created this swarm of cooperating ground robots. Each robot is responsible for an inventory stack. So it carries a couple of dozen of pieces of inventory. And then when a product is ordered, the robot cooperates with itself, the surrounding robots, and it's able to drive through this highway right, through cooperation, and deliver the product to a human who reaches out, literally reaches out of the inventory stack, pulls out the product, puts it in a box, and ships it off to you. And that's how we 
Amazon is capable of delivering a pink tiara to your doorstep in less than 24 hours. And this sort of system is only enabled through the cooperation of all of these robots. So we've been talking a lot about ground-based robots here. Let's switch gears and look at aerial robotics, right? So we're all familiar with the helicopter and its capabilities. And through natural evolution, we went from not one main propeller in the system, but we evolved into a system where we had four main propellers. And that's this quad rotor that you see here. So this sort of stability and control and mobility that you saw as a quad rotor was flying in is really only enabled through the cooperation of these four motors, not just one motor. Now, the natural next step here is what happens if we not only look at one quad rotor in the system, but we expand our system to include teams of cooperating quad rotors, right? And that's exactly what Dr. Vijay Kumar and the GRASP lab, the robotics lab here at the University of Pennsylvania, have been asking themselves. So uh, I just wanted to take a minute and highlight some of the capabilities that they've developed of these quad rotors working in teams. So the first is a system where we can design a cubic structure, a 3D cubic structure, and then the quad rotors in teams can autonomously pick up the arms to the cubic structure and then bring them over to the structure and then attach them through magnetic joints and autonomously build any sort of structure that you want to uh, you know, create. The second capability I wanted to outline was um, you know, really attacks this issue of what if we want to carry something that's just a little bit too heavy for one quad order, right? And the solution is, let's put four quad orders on the object and use that to pick up heavier objects. So it's through teamwork that we're able to pick up extremely heavy payloads and we're also able to build these sort of uh, three-dimensional cubic structures completely autonomously. So what I challenge myself and my team at Identify Technologies to ask ourselves is, how can we use these cooperating robots to more effectively detect improvised explosive devices? So improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, are roadside bombs that are constructed and deployed in unconventional warfare. And the damage that one of these IEDs can cause is just incredible. So over the last decade, about half or more of all of our soldier casualties have been from these improvised explosive devices. So let's take a look at the, 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 the different sort of uh, detection vehicles that we've developed as a country and how they've evolved over the years. So first we have this uh, roller that you mount out front of your vehicle. And this is a simple roller cooperating with the driver of the vehicle. From here we evolved into a scenario where we had not one roller but multiple ground-based vehicles cooperating in teams that went out and detected IEDs in front of our military convoys, right? So from here, the big question was, how can we remove the human from this detection vehicle? And the answer was, let's make it an aerial vehicle. So we have these unmanned aerial vehicles that cooperate not with other robots, but these, these helicopters actually cooperate with a team of 10 or 20 operators, Air Force operators that are sitting in a trailer and cooperating with themselves to control and operate the sensors on this helicopter and detect IEDs. Now, the natural next question here is, what happens if we have not 20 humans cooperating with each other, but we have a lot of robots cooperating with each other? And that's exactly what we're trying to develop at Identify Technologies. So we're trying to create this swarm of, and team of cooperating quad odors, where each one is interfaced with the right ground penetrating and ground sensing technologies, so that as a team, they can autonomously cooperate without the guidance and without the direction of a human being or a team of human beings, and they can go out and find IEDs in front of our convoys and alert our soldiers before they get too close. So when I talk about these quad rotors cooperating and flying out in front of these convoys, the really key concept here is uh, swarming. So here's a video of some of the swarming capabilities that Dr. Kumar and his team at the Grass Lab have developed. So these cooperating robots are absolutely incredible, right? And they can actually operate by cooperating with the home base, or they can operate by cooperating with each other, where each quad follows a simple set of rules. So they say, OK, I'm going to maintain this orientation, and I'm going to maintain this distance from all of my peers that are around me. And through a simple set of rules, you can actually create this really sophisticated mesh network, like a school of fish, that's able to cooperate and fly in the swarm like this.
So the development of this sort of product to, to help detect IEDs for our soldiers um, is really dependent not only on the cooperation of these robots, but it's also de dependent on the cooperation of the people involved, right? So I myself cooperate a lot with Andy Wu, who's my partner. He's a student at the Wharton School. We cooperate with uh, Dr. Kumar, the Justin Thomas, and the researchers at the Grass Lab. We cooperate with Trudy and John that work for the Center of Technology Transfer at the University of Pennsylvania. We cooperate more broadly with the Penn community, with the Weiss Tech House for Innovation, the Wharton Entrepreneurship Group, and the Mac Institute for, for Innovation Management. And it's really through this sort of team cooperation of the robots and team cooperation of everybody involved that something like this has a chance of becoming a reality. So I wanted to take a step, a moment here and um, recap. So, We've looked at the evolution of the human race. We've looked at the evolution of manufacturing facilities, of different sorts of ground-based robots, of different aerial robots. And we really see that if we look at them through this common evolution framework, it's this last step in the framework where we go from one unit to a system of cooperating units. That allows us to accomplish great things. And it's that step in the framework that allowed the human race to become so great, that allows manufacturing facilities to deliver so, so many automobiles so quickly. And it's what allows Amazon to manage its warehouses of 100,000 pink tiaras, right? And at Identify Technologies, we believe that it's this team of co cooperating robots that's really going to allow us to more effectively detect IEDs without human involvement and really help save the lives of our soldiers. So the future of these cooperating robots is absolutely incredible. But making something like this happen is not only dependent on the robot, but it's dependent on you and I and all of us in the audience coming together and putting our heads together and cooperating here. So please, join me and let's make this all a reality. Thank you.